What is up everybody, it's Stas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ from yesterday's session on the 29th of November, and I also want to share with you guys what I did in terms of trading yesterday, as well as a couple of trades that I'm involved with in my swing trading account, and I also want to go over you guys, guys, because you guys and natural gas, they got absolutely pummeled, they got hit through the floor massive drop I wasn't even expecting a drop this big and we have to go over that and talk about kind of what are my plans right now involving you guys D gas and natural gas kind of what my thoughts are there but before we do get into the video all I ask from you is if you enjoy the video if you find value in this video simply go down below hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me and if you want to be a part of our community the strive smart community the Discord link is down below. The Facebook group link is down below. And I'm also running a 20% off Black Friday sale on the Strive Smart merch. That is linked down below as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get into it. Let's talk about the good old S&P 500. So you guys can see here... On yesterday's session, or rather in yesterday's session, the S&P closed down $12.65, down 0.4%. So we had quite a retracement yesterday in that little short day of trading. And by the way, yesterday, um, the day ended at about 1 p.m. Eastern Standard, which is why you can see the candlesticks ended right around here with about three hours left in the market because the market typically closes at 4 p.m., right? Eastern Standard standard time that is so you guys can see again the retracement we saw you know in terms of the S&P which is quite healthy in my opinion and if you guys have been following my videos over the past couple of days I've actually been talking about this very correction that we're starting to see right now because through my point of view here and I'm sure a lot of you all could relate the S&P was quite a bit overbought at this point in time when it hit that all-time high at around 31.54 so so RSI was extremely overbought. We were overextended above that 50 SMA, which is this green line. So I figured sooner or later, we're going to see a retracement more towards that 50 SMA to bring that RSI down to a healthy spot. And really over the past couple of retracements, we've held that 50 SMA as a support, which is what led me to this decision. And you guys can see now we're starting to retrace, right? So what am I looking here? in terms of the S&P, like what am I looking at? Um, maybe we pull down even further, and this is really going to depend on what the futures market looks like tomorrow, um, Sunday, 6 p.m. when it opens up. Let's say these futures gap down. You know, you could expect a potential pull down on Monday, maybe down to that 50 SMA at around 31.30, but ultimately, I think this thing will continue going up at least in the short term here, and I know a lot of you guys... Um, are following the trade war, you know, between the U.S. and China. Let's say we get a, a huge trade deal done. I think this market will continue to fly up. So treat this. I'm not telling you to treat it, um, but treat it as a potential dip. That's at least what I'm doing. But again, you know, don't buy the dip just because I'm saying um, to do that. Do your own research in terms of that and make your own conclusion, really. So let's go to the Dow Jones. Let's talk about that very quickly uh, on the hourly chart chart, you can see, same as the S&P, it's retracing, right, from 28.174, um, which was that all-time high that we hit, now we're starting to pull down to that 50 SMA, which has been a level that we've held after every retracement over the past couple of weeks, pretty much, right, so the RSI is getting down to that healthy spot, so this, in my opinion, could hold maybe 28,000 bucks flat, could be where it flatlines um, and, and potentially runs up more from there. And again, I'm watching these futures markets, guys. Very, very important because if they gap down Sunday and that gap down holds through Monday morning, that could be a huge sign that we're pulling down even further. And that's what I'd be watching. Um, you know, this level is where I'd be watching for the Dow to hold so I could potentially buy the dip. And for anybody else out there, but again, I am not telling you to buy buy the dip, right? So NASDAQ here, 
down about 32 points yesterday, down about 0.4%. Hit that all-time high. What day was this? The 27th? What day is it today? The 30th. Okay, so we hit the all-time high three days ago, right? And we actually got rejected um, at that same level, roughly, at that all-time high. So that's looking like a double top here. And now we're making a lower high. So now we're looking like we want to retrace down to that 180 SMA on this NASDAQ, right? Because you can see each time Time we've pulled down we've held that 180 SMA you can see it here 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 as well you know we pulled down a couple of days ago um, we triple bottomed right around that 180 SMA ended up launching above it again so I'd definitely watch this level maybe around 8350 on these NASDAQ futures and um, yeah really that's it guys in terms of these markets nothing crazy to go over they're just simply retracing everything that goes up and again these markets have been going up for the past couple of days here, everything that's pushing up aggressively, it's ultimately going to see a breather, which is what we talked about in these previous couple of videos, and that's what we ended up getting in these markets yesterday. So let's talk about what I did yesterday in terms of my trading, and the truth is, guys, I didn't really do anything. You know that I'm swing trading Home Depot. That's one of my uh, new swing trades here that I'm in. And Home Depot is one that I was getting in pre-market, I believe, on Thursday, right? Thursday pre-market, I ended up getting into Home Depot, pulled down, shot up to 223. Now we're seeing yet again another retracement down to about 220 bucks. So here, I'm not looking to add more money quite yet, but I still feel comfortable holding my shares because they are, if I remember correctly, in the 220 to 221 level. So that's really all I did. Um, I was considering taking a position in. Tesla here, guys, which we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, but I didn't want to pull the trigger quite yet to see if I could potentially get a lower starting cost point uh, maybe here on Monday. And let me show you guys why um, very quickly before, you know, we talk about you guys and D gas. But with Tesla here, you know, we did not really see a confirmation that we're breaking to the upside quite yet. We are seeing a strong support here, which could end up launching us up. But again, we did not get the launch up quite yet, which is why I didn't take a position. And also, I could get a lower cost point here, especially on Monday if we gap down and start to test 320 bucks, which is a major level of support where I'd love adding a little bit in Tesla if it finds support there and if it starts to climb back up. So Tesla, you know, I love it. I did not take a position on, on Friday, but I'm looking to take one here on Monday. I almost did, guys. I'll be honest. I almost Almost did, um, but I'm going to give it some time here. So let's go over you guys and D gas and natural gas guys, which was an absolute bloodbath. Well, not for D gas. D gas did absolutely fantastic. Natural gas and you guys absolute bloodbath. Let's talk about that. NGF20. And guys, we've been talking about this over the past couple of videos, haven't we? I literally said and have been saying that DGAS in the short term is the winner in my opinion. Natural gas, there's a lot of downside. That's what I've been saying over these past couple of days due to the mild demand that we've been seeing for natural gas with a 28 billion cubic feet withdrawal this past Wednesday, which is a lot less than what we would like to see, and it's a lot less than what was expected, right? That's showing the lack of demand and honestly the mild weather across the U.S. It hasn't been as cold as a lot of people thought. So that's putting some pressure on natural gas, a lot of pressure at that, to the downside, right? So this thing is down, guys. I can't believe I'm saying this. 7.5% right now. Well, it was down 7.5% on Friday, which is insane. This must be, this is probably the biggest drop I've seen that I could remember here in the recent future, right? So we were down 18 cents, down about close to 20 cents here, down to $2.31, guys. And like I mentioned in previous videos, you know, rather, and I think it might have been the last video, you know, now that we're breaking levels down that we haven't really been to ever, there's nowhere to look in terms of supports, um, at least here on the January contracts, right? In or the January futures, rather. So, you can see here, this is technically the low of all time. 
in terms of these January futures contracts. So if we go back to that 20 day, one hour, what am I looking to see here, right? In terms of natural gas? Well, in the short term, like I've been saying, D gas is probably in the favor, which goes up whenever natural gas is going down. But that doesn't, you know, that doesn't deter me from saying that you guys could see a bit of a comeback here, uh, maybe in the next day or two, just simply because natural gas is extremely extremely oversold. It's extremely oversold, right? Any type of push to the upside here will give us a short-term play in you guys, right? It will give us that short-term play in you guys. Let's say if this goes up to the 50 SMA again, and again, I think ultimately it'll continue the downtrend here in the next two, three weeks. But in the next couple of days, we could maybe get that pop where we could play you guys. And then once it's hitting that 50 SMA, maybe at about 240, 240, 38, whatever it may be, then if it's if it's continuing to go down from there, we could flip over to DGAS and profit on the continuous downside that we could be seeing here over the next two, three weeks, like I've been saying in these videos. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for here, guys. A lot of red. It's it, 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 This is terrible, guys. This is really, really terrible. Um, but again, the RSI, well, actually, the RSI is not too bad in terms of the five-day, five-minute, but I'd, I'd still just watch for that potential potential comeback play. Honestly, the potential comeback play is there because judging off the trend here, guys, you can see, you know, each time we've hit a lower low, and this is a drastic lower low, right? Each time we've hit that, we've come back a little bit, right? Just like the S&P hitting all-time highs, it has to pull down, right? That's kind of the same thing with stocks in futures, for the most part, that are going down, right? They're getting crushed down, down, down. Eventually, they're going to come up a little bit before breaking up completely completely or continuing to go down. So that's kind of my thoughts there on natural gas right now. If we flip over to you guys, you can see $2.50, you know, in the red, 21% down in one day. That is insane, guys. $9.27. And you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about there with the potential bounce back play. It looks like it's forming slowly after hours and towards the end of the market on Friday. So watch that. You know, maybe we go back up to the EMA, maybe at $9.90, $10. Bucks. Maybe we break that and rally back up to that 50 SMA. Who knows? That's kind of what I'm looking at right now on you guys but nonetheless guys I am probably sticking to um, the sidelines right now. Maybe Monday I hop in if anything's looking extremely attractive in terms of these two, but they're extremely volatile right now. And if you get caught in the wrong trade, which I know a lot of people have, you know, if you get caught in the wrong trade, it could really crush you, right? So D gas now up 21 cents, or not 21 cents, 21 percent up 30 bucks. We broke completely out of that triple top that I was talking about um, in. In yesterday's video, that triple top resistance that we saw a couple weeks ago um, right here, which was at about 150. We completely blew right through that. Now we're looking to test 180 bucks here. That is the next level of resistance. So maybe we pull down on DGAS, like I said, because you guys might see a bounce back play. So look for DGAS, maybe at around 155, maybe 160. That could be an interesting level to get back in potentially. And that's kind of my plan right now, right? My plan right now is to just focus on, you know, the short term pop potential here in natural gas, like I mentioned, right? If we get that, I'm looking to trade you guys here in the next one to two days, maybe the next three days, I could potentially get a push back up on you guys. But again, if that doesn't play out, um, I'm not sweating it because I'm in other trades. But if we end up getting that, I'll play that. And if you guys ends up not doing that, let's say D gas continues to ride up, like I mentioned, that could be a play here in the next two, three weeks. Um, because again, we're getting mild weather. The weather's not cold here. Um, not really as cold as people expected, but I, I think that will change in this next month. We just have to wait and see how this, the rest of this December month, really how, th how the December month in general ends up playing out in terms of weather patterns. And of course, 
what the what the um withdrawal rates are of the natural gas supply and so and so forth. So that's kind of my thoughts there. I know a lot of people um have opinions on this, so let me know down below in the comments what your thoughts are. And um yeah, it's pretty much it, guys, for natural gas, you gas, and degas. Let's talk about some other stocks very quickly, rapid fire that I'm kind of watching here. Google, I like this for a potential pull down and, and an entry at around 1270. You guys can see this is kind of a head and shoulder kind of on the on, on the smaller um scale here you can see it head and shoulder forming on google and it seems like it is selling off to form that right shoulder completely so if we get that full pull down um again 1260 could be an entry off of the bounce on that 180 sma here on the four hour chart at v is another one that did quite well despite the market selling off on friday up 35 cents up 0.64 percent now i'm looking to enter this one in these next couple of days because we got a critical break above Above that 180 SMA. Now we're looking to fill the gap up to about 56 bucks, which we did that multiple times over the past couple of weeks. So I like AtV here. Um, really, really attractive short term play, in my opinion. Of course, Home Depot. Um, looking to add more once we get closer to maybe 223 on Home Depot. And of course, Tesla already talked about that one, but looking to add heavily, not heavily, but maybe add a little bit at 320 if we do get that downwards break. If if we get the pop, might add here at about 335 and then ride it up. Hopefully, it gets back up to the 340s, and that's where I'm looking to end up profiting. So overall, guys, that's kind of the rundown of the markets. You guys, D guys, hope I didn't butcher anything. Um, hope you guys understood kind of my point of view on that. Again, let me know down below in the comments what do you guys think. And that's pretty much it. Leave a like, subscribe if you want to see further content. Join the Strive Smart community down below, Discord and the Facebook. And again, if you want to check out the Strive Smart merch store, strivesmartstore.com, we're running a 20% off Black Friday sale. That is linked down below. There's no discount code. Simply just go to the website. And if you want to buy anything, it automatically takes the 20% off. And that's going to end on Monday. So check that stuff out. I appreciate all of you guys. Guys, as always, for rocking with the channel. You are awesome. I'll catch you all in the next video. Enjoy your weekend. Peace out.